So welcome everybody, welcome to this episode of podcast. The uh, topic today is creating 2024. And um, by that, I don't mean creating 2024 because we have 2025 and so on and so on. But it's really about um, reminding ourselves how to create in this new energy because new energy we are stepping into the new energy and 2024 is kind of the one of them I would say you would really notice the split for 2024 if if you if you haven't noticed anything um kind of um happening in the world this year no matter how um how much you want to not look at it it will come up. It will be smack in your face. Not to miss. So that's what I mean by creating 2024. And today is the 18th of January, 2024. Just a little recap that last week um, on the podcast, I talked about some of the, um, I, mostly I, I base mine on Emilia Benz had, had a a video that talked about her look at what is coming up for the um, human collective in 2024. And there are quite a few things that that that, um, uh, that she can see playing out for 2024. And I, it feels like there's a lot of things happening for 2024 and it may feel like, oh, okay, wow. Like there's so many things that is being um, engineered and organized um, and pushed on us. And yes, we want to know what's being um, organized in, in the back by the, the, the powers that were. However, it's, um, we want to be, we want to be um, kind of know what's happening so that we won't get blindsided for one thing. However, I also want to talk about some of the things about how reality is being created. Because once we realize what reality and how how they were able to create reality, then actually we would it would strengthen our own ability to create the reality that we preferred rather than being the um, I would say more um, the the taking the um a victim mentality that oh, okay these are the things that's being pushed on us they can push but that doesn't mean we will respond so so this week i'm talking more about how we can actually regardless of what anyone else outside of us um is trying to create for us that we when we know how to create reality we can take back the reins and create our own preferred reality. So that's really the topic for this evening. And um, before I go into that, I want to, I didn't do it last week because I was a little too enthusiastic about talking. So this week, I, I actually just want to start by doing a presence meditation so that we can all come together and just let go of the day and be present for whatever else that we want to create for the rest of this evening. So let's begin by just taking in a deep breath. So breathe in. And then let it all go. Take another deep breath in to breathe in slowly and deeply through your nose. And then just let it all out through your nose as well, slowly and thoroughly let go. And one more time, just breathe in slowly and deeply. And let it all go. OK, 
continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breathing as much as it is still comfortable for your body to be very kind to your body. Yes, you want to slow down your breathing. However, you want to make sure that your body is comfortable as well. So it's a balance. And when you do this slow and elongated breathing, you let your body know. It's a signal to your body that it is okay to relax now. No need to rush. No need to fight anything or no need to run away because of any real or perceived danger. You're in a safe space now. Just give yourself, give your body a few more breaths to really let this sink in. Allow your relaxed mode. I start to kick in. And really feel wherever it is that you sense any tension in your body, just consciously ask that part of your body to relax. If you need to shift your body a little bit or maybe move your shoulders around a little bit, then feel free to do that. Just allow your body to get relaxed. And when you feel your body relax, then you can start to set the next intention. The next intention is to call back all of your energy, call back all of your attention and intentions to yourself. Whatever it is that you have been focusing on outside of yourself during the day, in this moment, just call those energies, intentions, and attentions back to yourself. Bring back all of your energies into yourself, into your body, in this moment. And really allow yourself be, to be very present to everything that is happening inside of you. And if there's any thoughts in your mind, then let go. This is not really about thinking. No need to think. Just be present. Just be with your body. Just be. It's not a thinking time. It's a being time. So be. Be your body. Be here with yourself in this moment. Be absolutely present. With your body, with yourself in this moment. And when you feel that you are all here, that you are present, and you have all of your own attention, intention, and energies in this moment. When you feel you have that, then you can come all the way back into the room and take another deep breath and let it all go. So welcome back, everybody. Let me just pull up on my notes uh, for today. Okay, so let's just, I mentioned that I want to talk about, you know, how do we actually create our reality? Because we have experienced so 
much of having other people create our own reality for us. Having the government, having um, our significant others, having our friends, all those people outside to create, kind of create our experience for ourselves. So that's that's kind of get um, present to what reality is. So let's let's talk about what reality is first, and then we can. Um, kind of talk a little bit more about how reality is being created and then how to control the reality that we are experiencing. So first, what is reality? Reality is really shared experience. Now I say that because um, for most people, even if I feel something is, is real, However, if no one else around me can feel what I'm feeling or shared my experience, then it's very hard for me to tell whether something is real or not. So when we say real, we mean that I can experience it and someone else can experience it as well. So this is really what um, we agreed to be real. So, well, you know, when I, when I breathe, I breathe there, I breathe in air, oxygen. So there has been scientific studies and other people can breathe as well. So then we know that, okay, breathing air in is real. Whereas if I, let's say, I see an alien um, out, out, outside my window, but if no one else can see it, then... Is it real? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I don't. I, I, I can't be sure. So reality, in essence, then is shared experience. Is something that when I can experience it, and someone else can experience it as well. So it's not just me. It's some something that is shared. So that's um. Any comments or questions about that so far? what reality is, or you may have other definition of what reality is, but I just want to um, state what my understanding of reality is. So far so good? Okay, great. Then let me just talk about, so how do, how is reality created then? How is reality created? Um, there's several things that comes into play in reality because it's a shared experience. So that means there has to be an agreement between at least two person, two parties to have something happen, to experience the same reality. So that there has to be some sort of agreement between more than one party. And those people have to have their free will, meaning that they choose to have that experience as well. This, and and they, they can't be coerced into it. So it's, it's a free will. And so I think that's, that's why when you when we um, talk a lot about how other people create reality for us, a lot of times you notice that um, whatever is being created, what whatever um, the, the other people tries to create, they don't just drop it on us. It's not. It's not a surprise. There's no surprise. There's always a the one of the um, agreement of creating in this reality is there has to be agreement. Meaning, I mean, one of the rules of creating reality in um, this dimension is there has to be a an agreement. So that's why whether you, for example, you know, last week I, I talked about one of the things is health, for example. So. 
the last couple of years of you know, health, health crisis, there is not, yes, it's the first time that we ever had experienced that level. However, there has been hint, there has been a lot of um, talk about, oh, okay, this pandemic, the coming pandemic. So there's a lot of talk about what happens when there is a pandemic. So it's, so yes, it happened. However, as before 2020 happened, all the way at least a couple of years, if not longer, before there has been talk about, you know, we have to prepare for a pandemic, blah, 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 all that. As, so there's a lot of um, talk about it. So why do they have to talk about it? They're actually telling us that, well, you know what? This is what we're planning and we are telling you. And why? Because they have to get our agreement. So how do we agree to to something like this? I mean, it's crazy. Who would agree to that? So agreement is when they, when someone tell us like that, okay, this is going to happen, or they hint that this is what we what we want to have happen. Consciously or unconsciously, everyone, everyone in the human collective actually voted for it. We didn't know. We were never told that we, you know, we we can vote for things like that. We 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 think we only can vote for presidents or we can vote vote for um the 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 school um. Uh, uh, we thought we can only vote for government positions and all those things, or school board's position, those things. And yes, we can do that. And those are more um, actual material votes. However, these are more energetic votes. And we do that all the time. We vote all the time with our energy. Um, sometimes more specific with that as well. We vote with our money as well. Let's say I paid money for um, this cup, for example. So I voted for this cup because I paid money to buy for it, to buy it. So if I, um, let's say, if I pay money to um, buy a, a good filter to make sure that I have um, healthy drinking water, then I'm voting for that. And so when somebody says, okay, we have to prepare for a pandemic, you know, they, they're talking about pandemic X already now. So it's actually, they're, they're asking us, they're already telling us, this is what we want to do. And what is your response? You vote. You don't, you don't just, you don't go into a booth and say, no, pandemic X, no. You don't need to do that. You just have to, in your mind, um, get clear. Do you want to experience pandemic X or not? And if you don't, then just energetically vote, heck no. Not on my watch. Or you say, you know what? I'm not sure if pandemic X is going to be... Um, exciting or not so eh, maybe or if you say pandemic x uh, yeah i don't want to look at it or if you don't want to look at it and you don't want to vote then you know you take yourself out of that energetic vote so that is what is happening every day with all the events that's taking whether in your own environment or halfway across the world. When something comes into your awareness field, is that, so a question that you can ask yourself to be a conscious participant in this reality is to ask yourself, do I want to experience this or not? And if not, then just vote energetically, vote no or vote yes, or yes, you know, 
Okay, I don't care about this issue, so I'm I'm not voting. I'll let the people who care about it vote on it. So then whatever those people vote for, that is your reality. So you're letting somebody else create that reality for you because it's an issue that you don't really care one way or another. So that is something that we, each and every one of us can do. We don't have to get angry or you know, shout at the other person. We just have to consciously make a point to say energetically, no, I don't want to experience this. And if you get triggered, for example, if they're saying, okay, we are we are starting pandemic X, for example, if you're triggered, you, you're triggered about, okay, if you're in fear, then process the fear that comes up for you. So, and, and I think before I started recording, we talked about how to process fear, emotions, or barriers, those. So, you know, you, you already know how to process. So if you're triggered, then process the feelings because you're voting energetically and the higher your frequency is, then the, um, the higher, um, or I would say the weight of your energy would be would count more than somebody who's low vibration and they're just voting because they are totally triggered and they they just unconsciously vote so that's so two things you need to do is process any triggers emotions about certain things and then also um do the energetic vote as well yes questions about so how you do energetic vote, you just say consciously disagree or you have to do some process? Well, I already mentioned the process is you clear your own triggers, you clear your own fears or any um, any anything that is that happens to you. Um. What if it just like news and you and you're busy? Um, how you can do that fast? Um, so do not so, catch all that. So if you're if you're busy doing something else, let's say you're working, you know, you're working with somebody else, and and somehow this person um just bring something up to you that you an event up to you and you totally don't agree with that and you don't want to experience that then what you can do is in that moment just in your mind you um say you just you you vote energetically so you are the one that has to create a way for you to vote if you um you can do it just energetically and say, whatever that person is representing, I disagree. So you just hold that. So energetically, you just say, I disagree. I do not want to experience that, first of all. And um, if any emotions or anything that comes up for you that you need to process, then you make a mo note of it. Make a men mental note of it. And when you have time, let's say after you, you're done with the all the clients of the day, then you find some time for you yourself to process the emotions that's being triggered. And if you really want to be a very conscious participant of the reality is you figure out a way. So you don't want to experience this. What is it that you want to experience? For example, um, recently I was looking at um, war, wars, all the, there, there are so many um, different um, wars that are being pushed and kind of, you know, drumming up that, okay, we have to do this, we have to do that. We have to fight them. We have to, you know, those, those, those kind of, you know, um, battle cries. So, yeah, so I process my own, I would say, objections about 
um, killing other people because we don't agree with what it is that they're doing. Uh, yeah, we don't have to agree with other people, but that doesn't mean we have, we have to kill them. So, so I, I disagree with killing other people because we don't agree with them. And, and also, what do I want to experience? I want to experience that we disagree with other people, but we can find a way to work out our, to work a, on a solution that we can all agree on. And yes, it's called diplomacy. It takes time and it takes, and, and we may have to compromise. However, that is for me a, an experience that I can sign up for. I will not sign up for you know killing other people just because they don't agree with me. So one thing is to vote no for the things that you don't agree with and Another thing is to actually propose in your own mind what is the alternative that you are willing to participate in. So you don't just say always shoot down other people's suggestions. You actually have your own positive suggestions that you put off to um, the collective. So, and also process the... Um, any triggers, emotions that comes up when you have time. So does that answer your question? Yeah, once you told me that, um, you know, I catch from other people some um, stuff, so I can work with that um, the same way. So um, I don't want to experience it. Uh, um, vote energetically and then propose what I want to experience, right? Yeah. It's the same way. Yeah. I can do. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Any other questions so far on how you can vote energetically? I also want to suggest that um, if you're not good at visualizing or voting energetically, you can actually create your own way of making it um, more concrete for you. For example, if it's, um, let's say, if it's, let's say, war in whatever place, you can actually just print out a representation, whether it is, you know, you see a picture in, in the paper, in a newspaper or a magazine, print out, like cut out a picture that represents what you want to vote on. And then just, you know, just cross it out with an X. So it's, um, what I want to say is you create your own way to vote. If you are more of a mental person, you can just do it in your mind and just say no. If you're more of a um, creative visualization, can then you can kind of just visualize that, the thing that you want to say no to as a symbol of that. And you just um, visualize you crossing it out and then you create another symbol of the things that you want and you just mentally put a um a yes to it so it really depends on how which works better for you and even with the uh, releasing with the letting go you can if just doing a meditation and releasing, if that does not quite work for you, you can actually make it a very um, concrete experience as well. I remember you can actually write your, like, let's say if you you feel fear, then on a piece of paper, you write down what fears come up for you, how you feel, it, which part of your body, you just write everything about it down everything that you can think of. And when you are uh, sure you've written everything down, then what you can do is you can either burn that piece of paper or you can uh, shred, shred that piece of paper. So those are 
other ways that if you're not sure, if you're one of those that, you know, don't, not quite sure how to release energet energetically, you can use those things to assist yourself because it's about working with your, um, with your body, with your unconscious mind. So when you actually write something out and you burn it, you can actually see it with your own eyes. You can smell the, 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 the burning and all that. So that in itself is a message to your unconscious mind that you want to release that. And your unconscious mind will receive it and say, okay, this is what she wants. I will do that. So that is, um, there are not, there are many ways to release, let things go, and there are many ways to vote as well. However, what I want to point out is that everything that happens in our reality, it happens because we allow it to happen. We allow it to happen because we are not aware or because we, um, for whatever reason, is too pre um, busy with, with other things. And that happens as well because life in the modern world is so chaotic that, yeah, there are things that happen slip through the crack. And it now it has happened in our life. So what do we do about it? We can always let it go, forgive ourselves, and then make a mental point to not experience that again and just say, okay, no more. And um, vote no and let go of any emotions that comes up. That is what, if you want to, to take charge of your reality, then start doing these things. And the other thing is, it's really about power. Because, um, when we have been educated, we have been conditioned to feel that we are powerless. And like the, the, the saying that, oh, what do, what do you want from me? I'm just one person. That is something that if that resonates with you, then it's you really need to look at your own um, owning your own power because even just one person you are a very powerful being you are so powerful that they have to tell you in advance what they want to do to you they can't just you know okay well, we decided to do this tomorrow and we're just bringing it on this person because this is just one person. No, you can't do it. You have to actually set that intention ahead of time. And that person would um, vote on it consciously or unconsciously because we we think that, okay, we, we send our intention and you know we can't hear it. They didn't put it in the newspaper. They didn't advertise it. So, but we are such powerful beings is that we pick up other people's thoughts and because we are so powerful we we can say no we can definitely say no even if it's just one person you can when you own your own power a hundred percent even if everyone else around you decide, oh, okay, we will experience this pandemic, you know, Y, Z, whatever it is. But if you decide, okay, no, I'm done. And I think, you know, I do not want that experience. And you pros and you um, say no, and you process all your own triggers whatever fear that comes up for you and you process all that and you just firmly say no not anymore then you can create a reality where somehow when all of that's happening you are not there you're either out of the country or you're doing something else or you're in an environment where um, you don't have that experience that everyone else seems to be having. 
And that's how powerful you are. And if a handful, and even if, you know, just all the people on this call, for example, if we all come together, agree that we want to have or we don't want to have an experience, we can actually create that reality for all of us. So human beings are powerful. One is powerful. Imagine if there's more than one. That's why there's so much um, emphasis on separating. We have to be, you know, I don't know how many inches apart because when we are separated, we are not as powerful. Whereas when we physically come together and um, to come together to create an experience, then we are, our power is infinite. We can create miracles. We don't need a hundred thousand people to do that. Just a handful of people can do that as well. And I'm not even kidding because um, the power of eight, I forgot her name now. So um, <laughs> Roxana, you can help me out. So she, she wrote a book about it. She's been doing, I forgot her name now. So it's the power of eight and we, we and she, um, so we Sorry. are. You were saying something to me? Yes, I'm saying a uh, power of eight. Who who was um who was the creator of that? Oh Lynn uh Lynn McTaggart. Yes, that's her name. Yes, Lynn McTaggart create uh, like she well she did not create that, but she actually did a lot of research and found out that when just eight people come together for an intention, for healing, for or for whatever it is that they want to experience. Just eight, does not even have to be 10. And sometimes even less than eight, when you come together with one, um, with the same intent, just healing, for example, then miracles can happen. And that is how powerful we are especially when we are when our bodies because our body is actually very powerful that's why there are so many um additives into our food is actually to to make our body less um, potent so that's why um, detoxing and eating clean and treating our body right is so important because our body is actually very powerful we can create miracles with just one person. And when there's more than one coming together physically to create, it's like the sky is the limit. So power, own your own power. Have that intention to come and own your own power. Don't try to give it to experts. Don't try to give it to anyone else. Own your own power. The more you own your own power, the more you can shape your own reality. So reality really takes thought. Thought as in how, what do I want to experience? So thought. So clear thinking. So make sure that you, your body supports you to have a clear mind. And when we can have a thought, have a, a, a well-conceived thought, when we can think of all the details of what it is that we want to experience, and we actually have the body to take whatever action is needed. If the action is as simple as write it down or to talk to as many people as we can to create that reality that we want to experience. So we, all we need to create our own reality is what it is that we want and, and the action because we have a body. So our body is so important, so powerful. And when we have those two aligned, when your thought and your body is aligned, 
it can create limitless possibilities and experience for yourself. And that is how reality is created, just a thought. And right now, other people are telling us the thoughts, are giving us the thoughts. And, um, and we... either consciously or unconsciously consent to it. And then um, if we don't process our own emotions, then we definitely agree to do it. So that's how the reality right now is being created for us. So when we know how reality is actually created and we claim back our power and we really realize how powerful we are, then all we need to do is create a story. It's called a creation story, for lack of a better, um, for lack of better words. So what do I mean by that? So let's say if you want to create a healthy body, you have to really have a, a clear idea of, you know, how do you want your body to feel? And then, and let go of all the limitations that you may have. You may you may think, oh, I'm too old, or oh, I had this accident, or oh, I have that injection, or oh, I have blah blah blah. You know, let go of all that limitations. It's only in your mind, and then you start to create a healing story for yourself. The healing story maybe you um find the right practitioner to support your health or you find the right um, healer to support your healing. So that's what I mean by the, the, the story is you find one step, you take action one step and then you have some results and you take the next step and the next step. So you create that journey for yourself and that journey becomes the story of how you go from being not healthy to being healthy. So you create that one step at a time for yourself. And that's how reality is being created. It's fairly simple. The only thing is we have to believe. We take back our own power. Questions, comments so far? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, we talked about it before. Um, you said everything happens because we, we allow it because we're not conscious, consciously. Can, can, you, mm -hmm. can you explain that? And then there's a second part to that question. Um. Okay, so before something happens, there's usually some clues that, you know, something, certain things are going to happen. And things do not just spring into reality. So there are, there are breadcrumbs. When you look back at it, you will notice. So those breadcrumbs are really energy lines that tell us that, oh, okay, so this is the probability of this happening is coming, it's coming, it's coming. And then that thing, whatever it is, happens. So when we start to pick up on, okay, this is happening, then um, we can actually say, okay, let's stop it now. So that's awareness. We actually have that ability to know what it is that can happen. You understand what I'm saying? No. Nope. Okay. Um, 
we are energy. Right. Our body is energy, right? right. Energy. So before an energy, before we actually have, let's say, a um, dislocated shoulder, there are symptoms that you know the shoulder is weak, for example. And if you miss those things, if you if you are distracted, you miss those things then at some point, there's that possibility that your shoulder may get dislocated. So this is what I mean. That before so, something happens, there are clues that you know, mm -hmm. this may happen. So, so if we don't get the clues, that means that we make it happen, then we start blaming ourselves and why did this happen? Trying to figure out why. Correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough one. The second part is that uh, you say that we can consciously create, but uh, we've also heard that the subconscious mind or the unconscious is uh, much more powerful. Uh, it's 95% of what controls our lives. But so how do we deal with that? The unconscious mind is so powerful now because we're not conscious. So increase your consciousness. Make that okay. a priority. I'm sorry, what was that? Increase your consciousness. Do not accept that you're conscious, that it's okay for your unconscious mind to be so powerful because we can know the only reason why we don't know is because we accept that we don't know. And we, we say, okay, we don't know. That's fine. But actually, we can know everything. There are, um, so there are actually programs. It's called remote viewing that, that has been mapped out of ways that we can know things, mm -hmm. things that are far away that we have no mm -hmm. logical sense to know. We actually can tap into it. There's, mm -hmm. it's just that we, we accept that, oh, if we didn't see it, if we didn't hear it, right, then we don't know. That's not true. We are mm -hmm. all knowing. It's just because we are okay with not knowing that we don't know. Right. Because we feel that we don't, we are limited. We don't realize that we are unlimited. Yeah. yeah. So we've given our power away. Mm -hmm. Right now, our unconscious mind is so powerful. It's because we've given our power away. Mm -hmm. We say that, oh, okay, I don't want to know. I couldn't create anyway, so I'll just let the unconscious mind take over. If okay. that's the case, then yeah, the unconscious mind will create for you. Mm. So mm. process whatever limiting beliefs you may have or mm -hmm. that you can come up with, you can think of around, mm. okay, I my unconscious mind is more powerful than me. Mm. Process that. And mm -hmm. then set the intention that you want to increase your consciousness. And once you have you, know, you set that for yourself, then your consciousness will start to go up. Wow, that's good. And the second part is that you know we I think subconscious mind means programs, patterns, and loops. We were talking about that earlier, so. Uh, again, I guess we don't give power to them. We say that the unconscious mind can take care of them, correct? Yeah. 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 Wow. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Once you... Can I ask you a question? Okay, sure. How we can ask our body to give us signal um to prevent some disease because um, when I get sick, it always all of a sudden, I don't see that signals. 
how can I program my body to give me that signal? So thank you. Okay. So do you feel tired beforehand? No, I feel okay. All of a sudden I got sick. Okay. The other thing I can think of is um Do you see other people getting sick? Yes. Okay. So I can give an example is um, recently my mom got sick. And it's just, just a, a simple flu. And then my brother got sick. And because I'm living with my brother now, so it's like, does that mean I'm the third one? because we live in the same household and if he's sick then the chances of me getting an illness is actually quite high because we live in like this even though separate rooms however the room does not have a concrete it's it's not and meaning that it's an open concept place so there is no and close, completely enclosed space between me and my brother. So yeah, the, the <clears throat> but I know that. <laughs> I know once he he started getting sick from visiting my mom, I know that, oh, okay. So do I want to have that experience? Heck no. <laughs> I have no interest in getting sick. So what what did I do? I say, heck no. So I voted no, and I took action. I make sure I have lots of vitamin C. I make sure that I, um, whenever the, the, the sun is out, I go out for a walk. I make sure I take care of my body. I meditate. I do yoga, all that things. Specifically for this, this week, this is what happened. So when we see... Why did I ask um, is, that you see other people ill? Is if you see other people getting sick in your unconscious mind, it's like there's this, okay, other people are sick around me. Then there is this kind of um, unconscious permission that, oh, okay, they're sick. So the probability of me getting ill is higher. So if I accept that, then I already gave permission, but I don't accept that. I, I understand how the game is. So I make sure I energetically voted no, and I took action to back it up. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So especially, you know, this time when it's colder and you see other people getting sick around you, it's like, when they have the, the the advertisement is you know okay it's flu season or it is allergy season it's actually they just giving you you know not so you know, subtle um you know messages that hey they're giving you permission to get sick or get allergies so when that comes into your awareness you just know that you know just say no, energetically vote no, and do whatever it is that you need You need to do in order to make sure that you don't go that route. Support your body, in other words. Got it. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Any other suggestions? Any other questions? Yeah, can I add to that? It's okay, you did get sick, but then you can't just say I'm sick and do nothing. Mm -hmm. You still have to fight for it. You have to fight to get back to normal. And you, you do everything your in your power to do it. You support your body. You, yeah. you make After I got sick, I fighting, but I don't want to get sick. So I want to like vote that I don't want it and support my body because of course after I got sick I do everything in my hands to to yeah. fix it. Yes. Yeah. 
you support your body to get well as well. It's the mental, mental, which is very important. Like I had to constantly keep saying, uh, I'm sorry, you know, because I know where I could have picked up the virus from when I was out. And I did a stupid thing. So I know it was my fault partially. But I never expected all the symptoms that came up after. So I had to constantly keep saying, you know, I'm sorry. And uh, I consciously am healing with love. I had to keep talking to myself also, besides all the physical things that I can do. Yeah. Yeah. So that is important the, too. The mental us. is very important as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you forgive yourself and then support yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll throw it in if, for other people too. Okay, so I have something else to share. Sure, go ahead. Um, as you know, we have well four bodies: physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. So we can say I mentally disagree, I emotionally disagree, I spiritually disagree. What do you think of that? Because it's not just at the conscious level, we also have to disagree at, a, at other levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you feel any emotions, yes, sure. Definitely. Yeah. You make sure that um, like all of you are aligned. So right. you can have the experience you want. Absolutely. Alignment is very important. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Okay. So um, I think that's all I want to talk about um, for tonight. And I just want to recap this, that um, so creating our own experience one of the things that we really need to, I would say, focus on is to reclaim our power. We are powerful beings. We are, our power is really limitless. Just one person's power is already very formidable. If there's more than one, the sky is the limit. And, <laughs> But right now, because uh, we've suffered so many, uh, we've, we've been conditioned in such a way that <clears throat> um, it's not easy to find a like enough, even two person who agree to the extent that we can create anything. And if you, if you just look at your own family, it is, you know, how many of you is in the family that all, the whole family can act as a one as one unit most of the time. Not easy to find. However, <laughs> that's just the past. We can create new from now on. We can create new by just reclaiming our own power and and processing any triggers, any fear, any limiting beliefs, or any barriers that you can think of. And also um, call on source energy or call in your higher self because your, your higher self, you're the highest frequency version of you. And you can think of that as source energy as well. So use source energy or higher self energy to assist you in letting go and then to filling whatever the, um, the, the vacuum that is being, um, that, is, that is there, that's when all of that, um, 
I would say, unaligned energies uh, is left, then fill it up with source energy. And the more you do that, the more you can clear yourself out, the more you can reclaim your own body, detoxify your body as well to the best of your ability. Because um, we are not just a body, we are spirit and body. So the spirit part is we can we can clear and, and invite in source energy. But the body part, we also have to support our body. This detox, do detox, eat as clean as you possibly can. And if like like detoxes can be very simple, as simple as just doing a fasting, one day fasting, half day fasting, whatever it is that you feel called to and also um, respect your own body as well. Some bodies uh, can fast longer, some not so long. So respect your own body and do what you can. And then um, know what you want to experience. So be very clear on what it is that you want to experience and Get so clear that you are able to take responsibility for everything that uh, happens in your reality. So if you have heard of something or if you see something or if you um, read about it, then it is in your reality. So take responsibility. If you read something that you don't agree with, just vote, energetically vote, no, I don't agree with this. And then think of what do I want to experience instead? So get clear on what you want to experience. What reality do you want to live in? And take full responsibility of that. And that is really, um, what you can do as one person to create the reality that you want to experience. And if you want to take it further is to start to find allies to assist you in creating the reality that you want to experience. And how do we find allies when it's not easy for people to come together is really respect other people's free will. You don't have to find allies that agree with everything you want to do. You just need to find somebody who agree with what you want to experience enough to be able to form this um, kind of creation partner. It's like, okay, so we are here every podcast, every week, and we're here for healing. So within the healing, we are supporting each other. So that is like, we don't have to agree with anything else in life, but when we come here to heal ourselves and other people, then we support that healing environment. So that's what is what I mean by find allies. Allies doesn't mean that person have to agree with you 100%, but it has to agree with um, what you want to create with this ally, just the piece of it that you two come together. So if we do that, if each and every one do that or start to bring more of that in, then we will start to reclaim our own ability to create our reality. And that's how we can absolutely make sure that we can sail through 2024 easily and happily. Questions, comments before? So, so in this case, uh, now a lot of material come out and uh, uh, expose those dark uh, entities. But uh, when we read or contact those uh, material, we have to 
stay consciously disagree or whatever this. Otherwise, that will be in our reality. Is that? Okay. Basically, yes. So, okay. um, so understand that whatever is in the past, there's nothing you can do, you, nothing you can change. However, mm -hmm. you can create, you can start to co-create your own reality, like from this moment on. So from this moment okay. on, when whatever, if whenever you hear of something, let some, somebody mm -hmm. say, let's say, okay, they are sick. Whenever you hear that, then you yourself would say, okay, I don't want to be sick. Mm. I don't want that. I don't want to sign up for that experience. So you energetically vote no and you take action to support your body to not go there. Okay. So that's so, just an example. It could be anything else. It could be anything else. It could be, you know, political instability. So else. they they are saying disease X is coming, or oh, you should just say no. Yeah. No. Just no. Vote no. no. Okay. And yeah. and then um find how you can support your body. Mm -hmm. Because your yeah. body is the one that actually have that experience. So support your body. Make sure your body is as um, vibrant Strong. and yeah. possibly be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Bini, I other... have a question. Yes. How to deal with people that are freaking out completely? Like I've known them for a, for a long time in business related relationships, kind of semi friendly. But I see them like completely lost the footing, like they are acting like children. But out of, I don't know, is it out of, I guess, something that they feel, but they can't express. And these are not poor people. Like these are not people that are fighting to feed the kids or something like that. But it's just complete. They're just not themselves. And they're freaking out. But. The problem is <laughs> that I feel it. <laughs> okay, then process your own because um, you pick you are you're sensitive, so you're picking up their energy. So yeah, whatever it is that you've picked up and whatever it is that you get, um, you are uncomfortable. The energy within your body is uncomfortable. You process it. Process it how. It makes me not feeling well. Yeah, I don't feel well after talking to them. Okay, so then all you do is you, um, let's say you feel unwell in your stomach, for example. Then you Yes, just... exactly. I feel like that today. <laughs> so you just focus on your stomach. You focus on your stomach and you send love energy to your stomach and just let your stomach know that it is your stomach that it is safe because your body is feeling their energy of not safe. So let your body know that it is safe and give love to your body. Yes, send love to your body as, as much as you can do. And then you call in source energy. Okay. Okay, you call in source energy and you just let source energy come in and assist you in letting go and neutralizing all the other, um, I would say, energies that does not support your body. So you process it yourself. And so when you do this often enough, then what other people would notice that, you know, they are freaking out, but you are not freaking out. They would start to, they may ask you, they may, they may, may not, but they may ask you, how come you're not freaking out? Then you teach them how they can do that as well. <laughs> if they are receptive. If they are receptive. If, if not, then you just process yourself and um, do your best to, 
not allow yourself to stay with that energy. Not to stay, they clear that energy right yeah. after. Because I have to communicate with them. It's not like I can just say I, I don't pick up on their calls. Like I yeah. have to. So you clear your the like your the contamination, let's say. So oh whatever you think yeah. from them, you clear it yourself. And these are good people. Like it's not like they are mean and nasty and backstabbing. Like these are decent people. Yeah. That's what happens when they're so unconscious. Mm -hmm. They are picking up all these fears. Their body is giving them the um, all of that food. Mm -hmm. But they are not conscious enough to know. No, no. They don't have any of this background. Neither yeah. they are interested in any of these things. And that's their choice. So you can't force them. It's their free will. So you all you can do is process your own part of it. Okay. Yeah, the do best advice know? is to clear the best way I can, and I know how, right after conversation. Draga, you know, sometimes when I know that I got some bad energy from somebody, uh -huh. I send that energy back to the center. I just give the command, <laughs> man. Return the uh, kind of cruel, yeah. <laughs> this negative energy I sending back to the sender, and I feel right away better. You know, it's it's gone right away. Okay, yeah, I can do, that, can too. do that too. <laughs> yeah, do both. <laughs> Okay, any other questions or comments? If not, then... One more. Oh, yes, go ahead. Can you talk about self-doubt? Is that giving our power away when we doubt ourselves? Definitely, yes. And um, self-doubt is a learned behavior. So somehow, somewhere we picked up that behavior. It could be because um, people around us, they have a lot of self-doubt. They second guess themselves and we picked it up. So um recognize that it is self-doubt and it's not helping because the more you self-doubt you actually weakens your body so process the self-doubt and just um let go of that behavior whenever you feel you're in self-doubt it's it's a vibration it's a vibration of uh, is it yes or is it no? I don't know. Like that. Always second guessing yourself, always second guessing situation. It's um yeah. So So how do we process it? Where do you feel in your body? Okay. So um, wherever it is that you feel it in your body, so just notice where it is. Mm -hmm. And then you just set the intention, give yourself, let's say, 15 minutes of quiet time that you can start to, um, just, you can just let go of that. Set the intention to let it go. And then ask for source energy or higher self energy to come in. In the first time, it may only be 10%. Then that's okay. You, like, don't try to do this in one day. In 24 hours, get clear it out. You know, do this in batches because you still have to live your life. So do it in 15 minutes. Kind of feel, okay, so um, 
I feel that, okay, I'm 10% better than next time. When you have 10, 15 minutes, you do it again, same thing. And you find where it is and you kind of have some way of letting yourself um, measure how much better it is. And then you do this until it's loosened enough that you can, whenever it wants to come back, you, you realize, okay, that's that feeling. No, you just say no. And the more you don't give that energy, then the easier it is to not have it. Mm -hmm. But it takes some, it takes, I have that myself for a long, long, long time, always second guessing myself until like really, you know, seriously do the releasing and releasing enough till I really get to the, the point where, okay, yeah, I can, I can choose now and I choose, no, I don't want that anymore. So do that work and it will, there will come a time and it doesn't, right now the energy is so supportive, it's not going to take long before you get to the point where whenever you feel yourself is in the cusp of um, doubting, then just say, no, nope, not up for that experience. Just vote no. Okay, so, but then there is self-doubt that can be general and there's self-doubt for specific things. I guess do the same thing for both. Mm, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If there's specific, um, you probably, specific probably is easier because you can measure it easier. Mm. However, the more you release the, the, the more your body is in alignment. Mm -hmm. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Any other questions?